so-called bear tax. Auckland Council is going to go ahead with the controversial so-named bear tax, meaning hotel room rates could increase a few bucks a night. Now, Mayor uh, uh, Phil Goff wants the money to help pay for in infrastructure. I just want to go around the panel before we go to the guest. Do you think this bed tax is a good idea. Do you support it, Madam Fox? Uh, no, it's a tricky one. There is a couple of questions you need to ask. Not really, because you, everybody pays GST for a start, so there's that tax. But also, we don't want to just be trying to scam the tourists that come. They bring a lot of money to our country. Taking, They're our biggest earner. But taking pressure off the hard, hard burden ratepayer. Look, the reason they want, but the reason that they want the, the bed, no, but the reason they want it is to pay for the infrastructure that they've neglected for years no, and no, years no, and no. years. All right, Stuart no, Nash. No, no. So the reason they need it is because this government has failed to keep the oh, infrastructure up 30, in Auckland for nine long years. 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 You know, the thing is, whilst you hear the whole hoteliers and moteliers jumping up and down about this, they have doubled the price for beds when the lines are in town. I don't think tourists are going to, are going to notice two or three or four dollars a night. All right. OK, what do you reckon about this? Bed, a so-named bed tax, yes or no, John O'Neill? Look, I'm not going to tell Auckland Council how they should raise their money no, or not raise what their if money. It, what but about Palmerston North? What about if the hotel... Well, yeah, the tourist mecca of Palmerston North, of course, right. we've got to look into this. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> Actually, funnily enough, we have one of the highest visitor nights, but it's not necessary for tourist reasons. Okay, come but, on. But look, seriously, I think, uh, look, there's, there's other ways of funding infrastructure. Um, uh, we've got a $100 million tourist investment fund that we've got going. We've spent $3 million of that already on 14 different projects. There are other ways. I don't think ways. we need to fleece the tourists to do this it. Is this is not, this not fleecing, tourists. is it? Six We're bucks a night, really. But let's go to oh. Charlotte. Let's go, we've got a guest. I've got Chris Roberts from Tourism Industry out here. Are we fleecing the tourists? The tourists may not even see the charge because while it's called a bed tax, it is not a bed tax. You're very adamant on that. It's yeah. a targeted rate. So 215 building owners across Auckland will be paying, in some cases, more than double the amount of rates they currently pay. Uh, the building owners are not the people who run the hotels or motels. So they have to work out how or if they can pass that additional rate onto the person running the hotel. The hotel then has to decide whether they absorb the cost or pass it on. What we do know, it can't appear on the bill. It can't appear on the bill as a surcharge, so it can't appear as a bed tax. So it's the so-called bed tax that was never a bed tax. Can't we just put the rates up in the hotels, though? I mean, you guys are getting the visitors because obviously we've got a beautiful country. Look, the accommodation sector is totally prepared to pay a fair share. The only reason there was such an outrage over this is it's not a fair share. Uh, about 7% of the total visitor spend in Auckland gets spent at those hotels and motels, 7%, except they're the only ones being asked to pay for the tourism promotion of Auckland. What about the other 93%? Yeah, you do put up your rates, though, for big occasions, so therefore, surely you can make more money? And they also go down when no one wants to stay, like right now in the middle of winter, although the Lions Tour is helping this year. Lions, yeah. And so that's a one-off event. Um, there was a lot of talk about the Adele concerts uh, during the debate with the council. Yes, prices went up for the Adele concert for her uh, those nights. As soon as Adele left town, you could pick up a bargain uh, hotel or motel room in Auckland because that's how the market works, not just here in New Zealand, but so around who should, the world. So who should we spread the cost onto then, if it's not you guys? Look, every single person in Auckland benefits from having tourism in Auckland. Seven and a half billion dollars a year gets spent by visitors to Auckland and Auckland. Almost 100,000 Aucklanders are employed through tourism. So to have the spread across general rates is a pretty good idea. If you want a targeted rate, it has to be spread across all businesses because literally every business in Auckland benefits from tourism. Interesting. Back to you, Wallace. Oh, hey, thank you very much. And Charlotte, good on you. Charlotte, what's the news? And Charlotte, head, head over there, head over there. There's a guy on the table there uh, with a white shirt and tie. He's part of the Taxpayers Union, an Auckland base. I just want a word from him, Jordan. What do you Jordan? make What do you make of the so-named bear tax, mate? Um, well, it's a broken promise. Uh, Phil Goff was elected on a platform of reducing council waste, and instead all he's done is try to find new ways to get deeper into Auckland's pockets. Uh, the bear tax is probably illegal, um, he keeps on refer Phil Goff keeps referring to legal advice but won't actually give it to anyone or show anyone, including his own councillors. This is going to be a very expensive mistake. And I have had, as um, the Ratepayers Alliance, have had people contact us who will literally be going out is of it businesses. Going to court? But we're going out of business because of this rate. It affects some property owners by a million dollars. You've effectively put on a 2% rate hike on about three, 400 properties. That is terrible. 
and probably All right. illegal. All right, Jordan, I want to. What, how, how would you respond to that and, and to Chris as well, Stuart? Okay, well, I, uh, let me pose a question to Jordan. Aucklanders are suffering a massive increase in living. House prices are going through the roof, we know this. Infrastructure is creaking, it's broken, some would argue. So would Jordan rather have the visitors who come to New Zealand to pay this, or would he rather have Aucklanders who are struggling to make ends meet at the moment have an increase in rates? I, th I know what I'd prefer. I'd rather have the visitors come in here who use our infrastructure. Right, I want to get Mudder yeah. on this. Well, who this use is, our Phil, infrastructure. This, they should be Phil the Phil ones paying for it. Is do what they he pay said nothing do, for the which infrastructure. Is, which is it's actually a, the it's revenue of Auckland Council tax. is going right, up it's very directly into infrastructure. It's All right, that's enough. That's enough. I want to. I want to speak as as an Auckland ratepayer when I get that. Pill and I will see it go up every single year. We struggle. We don't want to see more Absolutely. rates. You know, the, the infrastructure is broken. We need to fix it. And isn't this just a targeted rate that can help? It spreads yeah, the cost. Target, targeted... Businesses, should, businesses should, should pay their way. Well, it's targeted to one sector. It's only, like this dude said over in the blue shirt table. <laughs> it's like it's only targeting those three or 400 hoteliers. But there are eateries, there are restaurants, there are all sorts of services that happen in the city because of the tourist dollars. So how is that fair? It's targeted to visitors who use our infrastructure and right. pay nothing else. What about, what, what, we what don't about, use our own infrastructure. What about you, John? You for, for those, to, hang on. Airbnb is a real growing thing. People like Charlotte, sure. for example, they use it as a bit of a sort of a way it's to sort of get income. Seymour. Is it going to affect those who, you know, want to sort of do a bit of an Airbnb? Well, well I mean, you've got to ask then, if you're going to introduce a tax or a rate scheme or a whatever like that, how far are you prepared to go with it? Ask so David what Seymour. we know actually, for example, in Palmerston North, when I was joking about being a tourist mecca, actually we have a huge number of people who visit the city, but they're visiting yeah. friends and relatives, right? So they're putting a burden, their outsiders putting a burden, but you can't tax that. So if you're just going to say we're going to tax outsiders through a bed tax or a hotel tax or an extended rate, whatever you want to call it, Actually, you could be in deep trouble. What about me? Do I just, get taxed if I go and stay in a hotel? Just, just finally, just finally, Stuart. Uh, Tai Nui have come out saying it's going to really affect their business. You know, they mm. own Novotel, they've got a Pullman mm. coming up. Yep. Think about it. Ten ro $10 room per night across 500 rooms. That adds up. That's business paying the extra costs. And that is how we need to fund our infrastructure because Auckland is broken at the moment. Auckland ratepayers pay billions of dollars. This is all this is doing is saying those to those who visit our wonderful country and our biggest city, all right. hey, you know what, you've got to pay a little bit more because you're using the infrastructure. We're now, get, we're now levering a little bit on you. Okay. I think that's fair. Interesting, I think interesting it's fair. issue. Uh